It's acknowledging the fact you have more years behind you than ahead of you. What is a midlife crisis for people who could never afford a sports car? Being the oldest person in the club. I used to go to electronic dance music warehouse parties in the 90s, and once we saw a group of older Asian men and women partying there. They were visually very out of place with the teens around them. They didn't speak English, were probably at least in their 50s, maybe older, and were all wearing suits and business attire. It was such an odd sight at first, but they were so happy, dancing and smiling, hugging each other, etc. It blew my mind at the time, but as I get older I think how absolutely awesome it was that they were cutting loose like that. Major Golden Retriever Energy. We should all be like that sometimes. Don't forget that life should be fun too. No two midlife crises are the same. For my parents it looked a little like this, though I guess their midlife crises started earlier than most because they had kids young. Mom, she met a guy 10 years younger than her and just left. He had a decent job so he took her on all these international vacations. Then when she came back, to the area not to be a mom, she kept dating younger guys and partying for like 10 years. Bio dad, started kayaking, joined a dance class, and just became social which wasn't a word I would have used to describe him before. My stepdad and mom had split up, and my stepdad had been dating someone else. When they, stepdad and his girlfriend, broke up my bio dad swooped in, started dating her, like a month later, and then they got engaged. Then tried to get custody of my sister and I. When that didn't work out, it was a mess of a custody battle and the two people fighting over us didn't end up taking us, he stopped speaking to my sister and I for about two years. Oh, ex, stepdad, I think he's just finally getting to his lol, I think the other parents made him have to wait for the kids to all grow and move away before he could have his. Or maybe the midlife crisis was deciding to keep us lol. But still, I don't think I'd even call it that. He's just got hobbies now, when before all he did was work. He's a Jeep guy now, like loves all things Jeep. He got really into homesteading and survival prepping, we joke about going to the farm for the apocalypse a lot because he's ready. And he got way more involved with his union at work. Oh, almost forgot. He bought himself a kilt for festivals, that he loves to wear, and came home with piercings, so I guess that may have been part of it. Getting a meat smoker. I am literally sitting next to my meat-filled smoker right now. Just smoked chicken thighs last night after doing a garlic, thyme, and savory brine with bourbon barrel chips. If this is what's left of life for me, I'll take it. Some of the best food I've ever had has been from my ceramic smoker. I just want to grill for God's sake. When you catch your wife cheating on you, your kids say they hate you, you lose your job, your doctor says you have cancer, your 401k tanks, you owe the IRS a lot of money, and your house is falling apart but you can't afford to fix anything. I just have a lot of stuff going on right now. Getting addicted to CrossFit and meeting up with a much younger girl there. In their defense. The only way they could get intimate with a younger girl is after a lot of crossfit. Going to Thailand. That's my old boss, I'll never forget the day I was on site with a customer and got a FaceTime call. It was all Thai girls passing the phone around a club waving and talking about me and how much they heard about me. Then it comes back to the owner who is sopping wet with spilled booze, incoherent and mumbling about how I had the smallest manhood on the planet. He squints focuses on the phone and goes oh, wrong number, and hangs up. We never spoke about that again until the day I quit and he brought it up at the going away party where the guy he meant to call was right there with his wife. I cringed so hard my toenails all snapped back 180 degrees. I went with a motorcycle, cheaper than a sports car and safer than a girlfriend as I'm married. For my parents, it was a remodel of at least one room in their house or outdoors every year for the past 20 years. They seriously spent enough to buy like two more houses on remodeling over and over. Start lifting. I'm 40 and in better shape than I ever was as a teenager. People online make it seem like once you turn 30, your body immediately starts to break down and there is no hope. It's like a line is crossed. While I don't think you can argue that gaining muscle and losing weight gets harder as you age. 
but what many people gain in their 30s or later that they never had as a young person is motivation, and a motivated 40-year-old can absolutely be in better shape than an unmotivated 20-year-old. I'm going to the gym and I'll have a better body at 37 than I ever did at 19. A well-manicured lawn. It's so addictive. Why does anyone do drugs when they could mow a lawn? My dad's getting heavily into making sourdough bread. It's his second most talked about topic, after a game called Sea of Thieves. I regressed. I literally spent a year going back to loud music, video games and hiding in my room being angsty. What was the point of anything? Covered lockdown really helped me live my darkest life. I came out the other side realizing I just don't care anymore. I am who I am, I have graying hair, a squishy body that aches every morning, work a fulfilling but financially dumb job, I have no real goals left that I am motivated by. My kids can't stand me, my relatives are getting older and I see them at funerals more than celebrations, birthdays and weddings combined. The apathy is real. Playing Dungeons and Dragons has really turned my life around. I'm facing down 40, single, and bored. My apartment is fine. My job is fine. Everything is just fine. Time was just passing and I had nothing to show for it. I finally sucked it up and joined a D&D &D group. Now I live for my Saturdays. I structure my whole week around it. My apartment is always spotless. All my chores are done so I can focus on the game. I'm working out and getting fitter than I have been in years. The group I have now is amazing but I know I got passed by several groups because they did video interviews and no one wants to play with a frumpy old lady. But now I feel so much better and everything's great. I'm just working out for me. Finding a hobby or several is a lifesaver. I can't afford a sports car, but at 45 I bought a $9,000 mountain bike. I just built an arcade machine in my man cave for the friends I no longer get to hang out with. Then I went further and turned part of my garage into a chill spot and set up all the old systems I've accumulated over the years. Dreamcast, Saturn, N64, Atari 2600, SNES, etc. As I finished and sat back at what I created I thought all ready for me and the boys. When that will be I do not know. My dad got into guitar in his 50s. He played for years but was perpetually stuck at the skill level of someone who'd been playing for two weeks. It boggled our minds. He played every day for several years, but he didn't get any more comfortable, or confident, or smoother in his strumming and chords progressions. Till the day he died he was just content to choppily strum chords and sing his Neil Young songs in soft falsetto. We all smirked at him and my mom rolled her eyes but one day she told me she actually misses hearing it now that he's gone. Personally, I'd give a limb to hear him play Heart of Gold one more time. Somebody replied. When I got tired of going to my piano lessons, my stepdad decided to take over my time and brought his dad's old banjo in there. He'd never attempted to learn an instrument before this, and was around 60 when he started. It's been over a decade and he still plays every single day. Someone who picks up a new instrument or language that far in life will be far more disadvantaged than a young person, but that never stopped him for a second. Despite his stage fright, he started performing at our small church and enjoys having a structured goal of learning. I am so envious of him for his sheer determination to practice an hour every day for the last nearly 12 years, and while I used to be a bit embarrassed of his skill level for a time, since I was a judgmental band nerd, I never miss an opportunity to brag on how proud I am for picking it up, your story reminded me of this and thought I'd share. For me, it was getting into every hobby that I wish I had done in the previous 20 years. In the last three years, I've gotten into kayaks, mountain biking, disc golf, tabletop wargaming, and gardening. Tabletop wargaming. Although that's still pretty pricey. I knew I was too poor for tabletop wargames when a guy I knew was telling me about 40k and told me that if I wanted to get into it, I should hit him up because he's got a hook up to a dealer for real but unlicensed 40k figures. Apparently there's a black market for that stuff. As a lifelong slacker who has gone through job after job and just generally been a permanent hot mess, 
my midlife crisis seems to be finding joy and peace in having a 9-5 job and health insurance. I finally realized I want stability and comfort. All the partying and crazy projects and boozing, women, etc. were really just masking the pain of not having stability. I finally have a regular job and I kind of love it. It's crazy. To my wife's dismay, I've started a mealworm farm. It's easy, requires very little maintenance and is low cost. It's pretty fun to look at the worms and beetles. The thing is, I have no pets to feed those worms to and the population is exploding. I end up trading them for eggs with someone who keeps chickens. People here looking for honest advice? Get a hobby. Crafting, painting, playing D&D, getting into flight sims, gardening, cooking, always a good one because you got to eat anyways, and you get to eat all that amazing food, or whatever. I think you are going through the thing I had to deal with a while back. What is the point of life? It has no point. Life is completely and utterly meaningless. We exist like slime growing upon wet rocks, because we can. We have sprung forth from the earth like weeds even. But that is also the liberation. Because life has no ordained point, no grand purpose you have to live up to. It's whatever the hell you want it to be. Give conventions and expectations the bird and do whatever you want, within reason of course. So pick your hobby. Curse society and forget Stacy if she thinks it's lame. Honestly a good hobby is quick to pick up, nearly impossible to master. Happiness comes from overcoming challenges with dedication and effort. Happiness is found in achieving something. You don't need to become VP in some meaningless job. It could be as simple as building your first jewelry box out of some scrap wood with hand tools. And hobbies can be cheap or expensive. There are so many projects that can be done with $50 of tools and scrap wood for example. Some hobbies, like cooking, are expenses you are already bearing. And others, like gardening, grow their own supplies. Sure you can easily spend a fortune buying all the accoutrements of a hobby, but are so many ways to manage on the cheap for anything. Tools can be bought used, hand tools over power tools, supplies can be found on sales, substitutions can be used, and often many supplies are found in materials other people are trying to get rid of, like scrap metal, plastic, and wood. Garage sales and social connections can be godsends for the starting hobbyist. And don't just give up. A good hobby is a little bit hard, something you have stretch and struggle for. That struggle is the entire point. It really is a little bit like having a job after your jobs. But that is okay, that is good. Because when you finally do overcome the hobby's various challenges, have your first success, you will feel better than all the fast food, drugs, or TV binging ever could have made you feel. Those milestones from your hobby will become things that define you, that become milestones in your life you remember fondly. I can't say I ever met a person who felt they had a life-defining moment after finishing a season binge on Netflix. I know many people who fondly keep their first project in a hobby, even if it's crap compared to what they can do today. And then it gets better, the habits you learn chasing a hobby bleed into other parts of your life. As you learn patience and determination chasing your hobby, you work harder at work with less stress, you handle your family easier, you might start taking up fitness, keeping your place more clean. And when you have a hobby you love, even that meaningless job becomes easier to bear. Suddenly you are working to earn money, to fund your hobby. You have to build meaning to give your life meaning, you will not just find it falling in your lap. At 47, I just started woodworking. In retrospect, it would have been cheaper to just buy the sports car. Of course, you hide the cost of tools in house renovations to justify the cost to yourself and your spouse. Like, without that bench planer I'm not sure we could have had such a nice looking fence on our budget. Imagine if we paid someone? Or, that bandsaw made the perfect cuts on those wood flooring pieces. Sure it costs a little bit of money, but it wouldn't have come out as nicely with a jigsaw. Before you know it, that lathe allowed me to make the perfect gifts for our friends and family this year for Christmas. In one year it paid for itself. A midlife crisis or midlife awakening isn't so much about buying new toys. It's acknowledging the fact you have more days behind you than ahead of you. Some people react to this realization by creating bucket lists and trying to accomplish everything on their list whether it is practical or not. 
In other instances, money and timing were the reasons why a person didn't get what they dreamed of while younger, but now they are in a position to have it society tells them it's too late. The pricing of the 2022 Chevrolet Corvette starts at $60,900 for the coupe and $68,400 for the convertible for the base. Not many 20-something-year-olds can afford such a car. However, a guy in his 40s is probably in a better position to buy that car but he's told he's going through a midlife crisis, when the reality is he can finally afford his dream car. We tell people at their high school graduation to never give up on their dreams. However, within the fine print is an expiration date in which society expects you to abandon them. Life is a personal journey. If there is something you've always wanted to do go for it. The tragedy of life is not that it ends so soon, but that we wait so long to begin it. W.M. Lewis For any of you going through your midlife crisis now I want you to know your best years are still ahead of you. Make sure to subscribe to be notified for more daily content.